Let's see here. We do have some history this week. Let's All right. About that. Welcome to this week in anime history, where we talk about things that happened this week in anime history, going back to 1984 in the premiere of Nausicaa of the Valley of Wind mm. in theaters in Japan. This was the um, first original film by Hayao Miyazaki, meaning he had made Kazan Tenkri Yosho, that was probably the third film before this. This is the first movie that he had uh, written uh, and conceived on his own, not the last by any stretch. Um, and was very well received by uh, otaku and, uh, and critics alike in Japan. Uh, in fact, it became a common sort of talking point for the budding environmentalist movement in Japan. So it was often used as kind of like a, um, you know, they'd show a clip from that if they were talking about environmental themes at a talk show or whatever. Um, and so Nausicaa was um, um, a sign that anime was kind of growing up and tackling more serious serious themes. Um, I'm curious, Steve, for you, when did you watch first watch Nausicaa in terms of like your overall otaku experience? Like, was this early for you in your otaku life? Middle, later late. on? Late? Mm. It was late. It was yeah. late. It, it, Nausicaa was not... Nausicaa was within uh, the past 10 years. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Um, so, it, you know, it's one of those things where I had known about it. I've seen other... Miyazaki stuff, and but I just never got around to it, and yeah. finally watched it. Of course, and, but it was like it was really late. It was really late in my otaku in, in being an otaku, so you know, it wasn't it wasn't on my radar for a long time. Yeah. And I think the reason why was because I thought Miyazaki was um, not inaccessible, but just kind of like oh yeah, you, you know what I mean? It's just kind of like okay, there's anime, then there's Miyazaki. And that's <laughs> kind of a whole other yeah. category, yeah. right? It's like Scorsese films. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's movies and there's Scorsese. Yeah, um, yeah. Mine was fairly early. Like I was, I definitely been in uh, uh, Otaku for a while. Watch a lot of stuff, and then I, I actually back in the day, um, we talked about this before. I, I ordered a um, a special Ghibli box set collection from <laughs> right. um, overseas, shall we say? Um, and this is before the the Disney license and. Uh, caught Nausicaa then and was um, suitably blown away um, by the movie and the uh, fortunately it was a uh, they probably used the actual like official um, Ghibli subtitles because they weren't terrible which, which definitely helped <laughs> like everything else on that in that, that set that I, I bought not the Ghibli stuff but other, other stuff that I, that's, that's a whole other story I'll tell another time anyway Nausicaa major thing um, remarkable movie and uh Definitely important bit of anime history. Um, speaking of also, and I gotta fix a thing. Just a little typo, one second. There we go. Um, moving forward, a mere eight years to 1992 and the premiere of Sailor Moon Ooh. in Japan on TV Asahi. Um, so I'm just gonna say Sailor Moon seems like the thing that's like, there's always been Sailor Moon. Right. 1893. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Shadow Puppet. Sailor Moon. Exactly. You know, it, it, it feels like it's always been around. So when you know, whenever I hear that that, that oh 1992, I'm like going for me that recently. Oh, okay. No, I have a false memory of Sailor Moon. Um, oh, yeah. I remember being dragged by my mom to fabric stores um, um, as a kid. You know, 10, 12 years old. And um, flipping through them and finding Sailor Moon costumes in there, in like McCall's or Butterworth, uh, oh, okay. Butter, but Butter something, Butterworth, Butter. Uh, anyway, um, um, not my area of expertise. And, um, <laughs> and just seeing okay, anime, and there are like, some Dragon Ball and some Sailor Moon costumes. When I was twelve, oh. that was like ten years before Sailor Moon came out. So I don't know how that. Connected my mind. But I remember, like, I, I can smell the paper. Like, I remember all these things about being in those stores, and I remember flipping it over and seeing these things. So I must have, you know, conflated two things somehow um, and seen something in those those, uh, those things. That's, that's really weird. Uh, yeah, exactly, John. And then you that's only 10 years ago. Like, that was, that was, that was recent. Um, but yeah, um, Sailor Moon. And so Sailor Moon's important because, obviously, Magical Girl. Um, one of many Magical Girl series, but also the first Magical Girl series to feature a team. 
uh, my two um, girls, mm -hmm. um, in the the same vein as the uh, Super Sentai Power Rangers show. So it was kind of crossing in the Super Sentai concept. And that was deliberate, like they said. We wanted to kind of add that into to the Magical Girl formula. Um, mm -hmm. And it worked. It sure worked. Um, at least uh, Precure agrees that it worked. Boy, um, did it. Boy, did it. Um, speaking of working, um, eight years after that, over here in America, Toonami premiered a little show called Gundam Wing. Um, Never heard of it. I know. Um, New World of War Gundam Wing uh, came out, and I remember the trailers for this because they, and I forget exactly how they said it, but something like, you know, the, the, um, the, the latest chapter in the epic Gundam saga, where, where? like, they knew that people in America knew that Gundam was a thing, but that no one had ever seen Gundam. <laughs> I, I, God, God, I was so confused. Because they said that, and I was just like, okay, I'm watching this, and I'm like, going, uh, 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 what happened? <laughs> um, where's, what? I, I no, hey. The nice thing about Gundam Wing is you can just skip a few episodes and come in and you'll be fine. Right. Right? Yeah. yeah. You don't need to really right. follow anything. Yeah. It's cool. Gosh. Um, were we talking about this? <laughs> this yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that, like, you know, you missed your episodes and it's like, well, that faction doesn't even exist anymore. And this right. person now has a mask on for some reason. It's like, what's going on? I, I know. It's it was like, it's like you, know, you watch it, you're just like, okay, I'll just... Because <clears throat> you know it's 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 kind of you figure that oh, I'll pick it up in the subtext so they'll explain it whatever and it's like no you know here you go you're gonna be lost you know and you're just like oh the, oh oh my god really really I'm gonna have to buy a DVD god. oh okay fine fine yeah, right yeah <laughs> fine um, which it did thankfully um, <laughs> but yeah I have very fond memories I'm a friend of mine and I got into Gundam Wing and we would. Uh, um, um, so we'd watch the midnight run. Um, so we get on ICQ. Those of you who remember that back in the day, oh, the chat program. Um, and I had so I had my computer on one wall of the room and the TV on the other wall. So I would be like this, watching it, and then you know chatting with him <laughs> and seeing stuff and chatting. You know, we 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 trade messages, and they would do um, um, uh, they would do Gundam Wing and then Dragon Ball Z right afterwards. Right. Um, so we get, um, you know, complex political, political machinations of, uh, uh, any given faction followed by episode three of a spirit ball charging up. And it was very, yeah, it was a very interesting, uh, context. The problem was we started like at episode 20 of Gundam Wing. <laughs> so you were just, is that the pretty boy who killed all the people in the last episode or is it the other pretty boy? Or is it the pretty boy right. who's in the circus thing? I'm just not sure. <laughs> very, very, very strange. Um, but they got to the end and were like, I don't know what's happening, but I love it. And went back and started from the beginning and <laughs> went back through and finally figured it figured it out as much as you ever can with Gundam Wing. It, yeah, and, that's, and then yeah, by the end of it, once you figure it out, you go, oh, so they were all psychopaths. <laughs> okay, <laughs> got it. All of them. All yeah, of them. All of them. <laughs> There's a great moment um, just stuck in, stuck in my head. So, Relina, um, the sort of spoiled witch kid at the beginning of the show, um, um, over the course of the show gets more and more confident, more and more serious, and you don't really notice it. Like, obviously it's happening, no. but you, 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 you realize she's getting a spy, but you don't really realize the extent. And then there's, there's, a, there's a scene, like, I don't know, 25 episodes in, where she's invited to a party, of all of these like diplomats who are basically just biding their time and not really doing anything with all this stuff going on. And um, she's just watching all of this pissed off, basically, that like no one is actually facing up to reality. And so she goes up, and I, I forget if she's actually supposed to make a speech or not, but she just does anyway, I'm not sure. And she goes up and she delivers this line where she says, um, um, you are all... Um, you're all making a terrible mistake in refusing to face the realities around you, and the Gundams are coming to rectify your mistake. And walks <laughs> off, and it's like, damn, girl! <laughs> <laughs> wow! Yeah, you get it. Um, yeah, that was a letter scene. Iconic. Uh, 
kill you. Um, <laughs> boy, that is a, that is a show that does not rest on its laurels. No. It just keeps on keeps on doing stuff for you. So yeah, that is all the history for the week. Um, a lot of history this week. Okay. 